So I filmed the same shot on every setting in this camera so we can see what the best settings are for saving space and maximizing quality. One of the best things about the C70 is how vast its recording options are. The C200 omitted 10-bit recording, so you had to choose between a hellish workflow with RAW or handicap your camera to 8-bit 420. But if I'm shooting a roll for a YouTube video like this, or shooting an event that lasts all day, do I really want that Goldilocks 4K 10-bit option if it leads to constant offloading of cards and filling up my hard drives? How much larger are the files for 4K 10-bit versus 4K 8-bit? and more importantly, HD 10-bit, because I personally care a lot more about the color information than I do about the resolution. And what about MP4 versus XFAVC and All I versus Longop? The camera does update the megabits per second in the menus, but I also wanted to see the difference in the quality of the recording options, so I recorded one minute with each setting. There's no color correction on here. I shot everything in wide dynamic range because in the 8-bit 420 profiles, if you try to put the C70 in C-Log2, the camera yells at you and says, what are you doing, you dumbass? There's not enough information here to record this profile. You can do it, but it lets you know it's a bad idea. Before we look at the respective file sizes, why would you choose one of these over the other? First, XFABC gives you all the metadata you could ever hope for. So the XFABC naming convention, camera index, camera A, camera B, the real number, the clip number, the recording date, a random component, and a user-defined field. You're never gonna run into a duplicate file name, which is especially important if you're editing with proxies. I personally don't do that, but I have had issues where Premiere relinks all the wrong files from a different shoot when my C100 records the MVI dash number, 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 which inevitably just repeats. I personally love that MP4 allows me to just click on a file, preview the thumbnail of that file, hit the spacebar, and watch the file. If I'm shooting an XFAVC, I have two options. I can right click and open in VLC player. I just have to wait a few seconds for the program to open, or I could open up Canon's XF utility program. There is a LUT option, and there's a lot of other metadata that you can see within there. You can see when you changed focus, but it's another program to open. And if I'm just looking for a specific clip on a card, I don't wanna to have to open another program. Now, a really disappointing thing that I found out during these tests was that once I put the camera up to MP4, 422, you can no longer press spacebar to preview the file. Uh, so that advantage is pretty much gone. There is still the thumbnail. I can still see who is in the frame, which is really nice, but I don't really ever see myself shooting in 420 on this camera. The extra color information is a huge reason why I got this camera. Next up is All Eye versus Long Op compression for the XFABC files. So it's a lot easier to edit All Eye footage. My 2020 iMac can scrub through All Eye and it can scrub through Long Op pretty well. You can of course transcode, but now you're adding even more files to your hard drive to fill it up. All right, future Eric here recording some voiceover while I'm editing. I've realized that the MP4 files are the worst to work with. Long Gop versus All Eye is nothing compared to how much my fans scream when I try to edit the MP4. I'm never gonna use the MP4, even though I love having the thumbnail in Finder. So yeah, I'm always gonna be shooting some variation of XFABC. Now back to XFABC's long gop versus all eye stuff. There are also some small quality differences between the long gop and the all eye. The compression type in a static talking headshot, I don't see any difference. But I know that if I was filming a scene with a lot of motion and a lot of small details, the long gop apparently can produce artifacts. But once you see the results of the file sizes between these two, you're gonna have a tough decision to make. Bit depth, 10 bit versus 8 bit. It has all those extra colors that we've been waiting for. We'll talk about how that impacts file sizes. Next is the chroma subsampling, 420 versus 422. The obvious category when it comes to file sizes is resolution, HD versus 4K. Now with DCI 4K versus UHD 4K, it's basically just like an aspect ratio difference and you just get a little bit more information on the sides for DCI 4K, which allows you to reposition horizontally slightly and reframe. And it actually takes up the exact same amount of space. The bitrate is exactly the same for both types of 4K. But there's one thing that makes me not shoot DCI 4K, and that's the fact that when I put my footage into Premiere and I right click scale to fit sequence or whatever it is, if I do that with DCI 4K, it's gonna go to like 49.6 or something like that and you're gonna have little slivers on the top and bottom and then you have to go back into the effects tab and manually type in 50%. And that little inconvenience every time I add 4K footage to a 1080 timeline is enough to deter me. And now the main event, file sizes. 
I already know the megabits per second on all of these settings, but I can't really in my brain quantify how much a megabit per second costs, whereas I understand how much a gig or a terabyte costs to fill up on a hard drive. That's why the second and third columns are here, so we can really understand the file sizes in a more practical sense. So starting at the bottom, MP4 8-bit 420 HD. Now it records at 35 megabits a second. When I recorded in the real world for one minute, give or take a half a second, I did manually start and stop my camera. But for one minute, I recorded 266 megabytes. Now, if I was to extrapolate out what it would look like if I was to do a, a small shoot, I would get about 16 gigs. That's the footprint I'm used to working with the C100 Mark II for the past few years. As for resolutions, no surprise here, 4K makes a big difference. From 16 to 67 gigs, DCI 4K versus UHD 4K, same bitrate, no difference, just a matter of if you wanna have the flexibility to shift horizontally. 422 versus 420 leads to about a third larger file sizes. So I'd say just shoot 422. I mean, that's what I'll be doing. The extra color information is no doubt worth that incremental increase in size. 10-bit versus 8-bit, interestingly, didn't really have a huge impact. Um, surprisingly, 10-bit 420 took up less space than 8-bit 420. And then it goes back to around the same file sizes for 10-bit 422. Weird. Now, if we go to MP4 10-bit 420 HD, same bit rate as 8-bit 420 HD. Always shoot 10-bit. So I'd say the one setting you never want to shoot is MP4 8-bit 420 4K. You're wasting hard drive space and sacrificing extra color information for no reason. With XFABC, long gop and all eye, have huge disparities in space. Huge disparities when it comes to their file sizes. If you want to go to all I, that 70 gigs turns into 181 gigs. It more than doubles it. Is the ease of scrubbing through the edit really worth more than doubling the space I'm putting on my hard drives? For me, with this machine, it's not necessary for me, I don't think. So the big choice you have to make with this camera is, do you want to double your file sizes, more than double your file sizes, to make editing easier? When I first got this camera, I shot everything in the all I 4K 10-bit 422. But for talking head stuff like this for YouTube, I'm never gonna do that again. If I'm just hired as like a shooter, at the end of the day, I hand off my SD card, that footage is theirs, they're gonna edit it. It doesn't really matter to me. And if I'm doing something that is gonna live on YouTube, I might not shoot it in 4K, but I'm definitely gonna shoot it in 422 10-bit. And I'm never, ever gonna touch MP4 8-bit 420 4K. All right, the sun changed a lot over the course of this hour. Hopefully my face is not blown out. Here's the top biggest file size setting, XFABC 4K 10-bit 422 all I versus the lowest 8-bit 420 1080. Can you tell which is which? The one on the right, that happy Eric, is the 4K. And then on the left, that's the 8-bit 420 HD. Reviewing on this 5K display in a 4K timeline, I can see the difference. It's pretty, it's not dramatic, but it's an easy, yeah, that one's sharper, that one's kind of mushy. But can you tell on YouTube after I render this and upload it in 4K?